Good morning and welcome in the name of Jesus Christ on this first Sunday in November, this All Saints Day. We welcome you here to gather with all the saints in every time and place as we worship God. I have a couple of announcements. We are having our parking lot coffee hour at 1130. We hope you will um, join us for that from First Parish Federated Church. Anyone else is welcome too. <laughs> and next Sunday, we are doing a food drive for the South Berwick Food Pantry, a drive-through food drive from 1130 to 1230, uh, November 8th. Just come on through with some items uh, and we, have, we will have some pickup trucks ready for that. Um, and I just noticed on our Facebook feed, it just goes to show you that you shouldn't believe everything you see on Facebook, um, that it says that we are worshiping live on October 18th, 2020, and we are actually worshiping live today, right now, November 1st, 2020, All Saints Day. Did I do that? No, I think that was embedded in our, um, in our okay. um, feed. Okay, you. Yeah. All right. Well, welcome again, everyone. Let's worship God. Yes. I get to go? Yeah. All right. Let's join together in our call to worship. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. With hearts and hands and voices, let us praise God. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Our first hymn is Shall We Gather at the river.
Let's join together in our time of reconciliation. For the times when we have let the complacency about our own circumstances take the place of advocacy for a just world for all. Lord, have mercy. For the times when we have let the appearance of faithfulness stand in for truly faithful effort. Christ, have mercy. For the times when we have created burdens of injustice and inequality for others to bear. Lord, have mercy. God's grace, God's love, God's forgiveness is enough for us all. God's grace and love and forgiveness is enough for you. Remember this, you are loved and you are forgiven. Let's begin anew today, right at this moment, loved and forgiven by God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Mike Effenberger is accompanying us once again this morning, and we thank Mike for, for being here. Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew in the fifth chapter. It is the assigned reading for All Saints Day. And um, we actually um, heard this in these pews Back in February, we heard these words um, before we knew what was uh, going to be happening to us. We heard these words of blessing from Jesus. Let us listen anew for the word of God. 
When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Here ends the reading of the lesson. May God bless our reading, hearing, and understanding of these words. Well, here we go again. We're right at the beginning of one of Jesus' most well-known and probably longest sermons. The Sermon on the Mount goes on for three whole chapters in Matthew's Gospel. And Jesus is at it again. He starts out with these lovely, challenging little teachings, teachings that we kind of know by heart but don't always hear, I don't think. We know these as the Beatitudes, the blessings. And if you really listen closely, they don't sound a whole lot like blessings in the traditional sense of the word, at least what I have in my head when I think of a blessing. He covers a lot of ground in this sermon. And when he gets to the end, three chapters later, our New Revised Standard Version of the Bible says that the people were amazed at what Jesus said. Amazed. In his Provoking the Gospel series, our friend Richard Swanson, from whom we read from time to time his translation, He is one where if there is a possibility for uh, looking for an edge in Jesus' teachings or a question of how it might be translated, Richard Swanson will take the hard edge and go with it and bang. He hits us with it. That's one of his favorite things. Jesus says, bang, something happened. Swanson at the end of chapter 7, translate it, translates the words thusly. When Jesus had completed these words, the crowds were driven out of their minds by his teaching. Driven out of their minds by his teaching. A little bit different, you might think, than amazed. A lot different, maybe, driven out of their minds because maybe, just maybe, they were actually listening to what Jesus was saying because it really just doesn't make sense. Everything is turned upside down. Jesus has it all wrong once again. So maybe we too should be driven out of our minds by this teaching. It is clear to me that Jesus is totally out of touch. Because as I said before, these are not real blessings. We know what blessings are. Their blessings are health and wealth and, and friendship and not having to wear a mask sitting in the pew, singing hymns. Those are blessings. 
And what Jesus is talking about doesn't even remotely represent the world of those who are gathered on that hillside, who are suffering under Roman occupation and are, uh, you know, they're poor and hungry and wondering what's going to happen tomorrow. So he's not really speaking to that, I don't think, with these blessings, much less the world that we're living in today. We're in a volatile and polarized political climate. We're enduring a global pandemic that's getting worse everywhere and every day. Not better, it's getting worse. Our healthcare workers and healthcare systems are stretched to their limits. They're physically and emotionally and spiritually drained, and so are we. And there are hurricanes and earthquakes and wildfires and rising sea levels and extreme drought causing chaos and upheaval around the world. And we see and many of our neighbors experience racial, racial injustice and economic disparity each and every day. So for certain, this year, more than many others, we could use a little blessing. But today, Jesus reminds us again that things are not always the way they seem. We see again today that blessing can come in many forms. And blessing falls on all kinds of people in many seasons of their lives. But today, especially, Jesus is pointing us to the kinds of people who aren't normally considered blessed. The poor in spirit, the meek, those who mourn, the hungry, the thirsty, those who are persecuted. See, our world typically gives these poor souls little regard. Our world is all about winning, coming in first, being the best. But Jesus calls these people blessed. And he doesn't say that one day they will be blessed. You know, later in heaven Your blessing will be in the next world. No, Jesus says, blessed are they. Right now, even now, even here. How can this be for us today? How in the midst of global pandemic and a bitterly partisan election? How in the midst of racial strife and healthcare system strained to its capacity, How can it be when we see voting rights and election outcomes questioned already? How in the midst of so many people hungering and thirsting and mourning, how can it be that with 228,000 Americans dead from COVID-19, How can we really believe Jesus when he says that we are blessed? Is that really for us? Is that really for us? Do we really feel blessed? A few years ago, long before everybody was searching for the Miracle Cure vaccine, David Lowe's wrote that blessing isn't like the flu shot. Blessing doesn't immunize us from pain or loss, and it's not a guarantee of safe passage through this life unscathed. Blessing, you see, is really more an invitation to transformation. An invitation 
for trans to transformation, to enter more deeply into the struggles and triumphs of daily life, to become more fully the people and the creation that Jesus is announcing in this sermon. An invitation for us to enter into the places of brokenness in the world and to be a presence for peace, a voice for justice, speaking truth to power, standing with the brokenhearted, being a salve to those who are mourning and those who need healing. In this work, God is with us. God sees us, God knows us, God blesses us and is with us in this work. So today, as we remember the saints who have gone on, as we gather around this table, we remember that in spite of everything that's going on in our community, in our nation, and in the world, that our God is with us in this even in those hard places, maybe especially in those hard places. So yes, my friends, on this day, there is a blessing in here somewhere. And it's for you, and it's for me, it's for all God's children. It is in that work that we are called to do, that is ours to do, to love and share with one another that our God is with us, world without end. Amen. We have come to the place where we get to share our joys and our concerns and, and people we love, people we miss, and lift them all up to God, uh, remembering that God hears our prayers, that God is with us, and encouraging us to be a blessing to all. I invite you to just enter in a prayer request into the Facebook feed if you'd like, and I will do my best to include your request. And at the end, we will be lighting our candles of remembrances, and Brad and I will be reading the names of the saints from our churches, members and friends who have passed away this, this past year. And Tom and Linda Bear and our deacons will be lighting candles, remembering them as well. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Holy God, in the midst of everything that is going on, we have been ramping up for an election for the past year, it feels like. We have been struggling with viruses and despair and panic sometimes. Help us to remember that you are with us through it all. You hear our prayers. You are walking with us as we pray for a, a safe and just election, as we pray that all who want to vote will be given the opportunity to vote, as we give thanks for the freedom to vote, as we pray that the election will reveal to our country elected officials who will care for all. In our prayers, 
we lift up Emma. That you be with her and you be with Dee. We pray for Paul and Tom. We pray for Charlie and Kay, Kathy's late parents, who have been a blessing during their lives. We pray for the physically abused who bear scars on their bodies and the emotionally abused who bear scars on their hearts and souls. Wrap all of your children in your healing love, we pray. Healing prayers for Anne, Frank, Marion, and David. Prayers for Janet as she moves to her new home. Prayers for the families and friends of Patricia, Marion. And we give thanks for Spencer, for his life and the new life he has now. For Edie and a church family who misses her terribly. We are going to now have our, our reading of family and friends of our churches. And while we can't read them all, I invite you to list people that you have lost in your lives in our feed and perhaps light a candle for them as well. Before the reading begins, I want to lift up mothers and fathers, aunts and uncles, grandparents and cousins. I know that all our church families have lost these past years. Beginning with the names. Gary Kennedy. Mildred Thompson Leland. Brian Smith. Lawrence Clyde Brackley. Jane Jane Carmer. Joseph J. Gillis. Kate Reynolds. John Thomas Marshall. Robert Noble. Dexter C. Fowles. Scott Watley. Christopher Emery Foy. William Hodgden. Edith Nelson Niles. Ellie Moe. Spencer Stonemetz. Reverend Henry Beerstone. Judah Taylor. Fred Plord. Helen Pride. James Nettles. Frida Hunter. James Bugby.
all those lost to COVID-19. Florence McIntyre. And all those whose names we lift up to you now, loving God. Amen. Amen. In this, our time of offering, we invite you to bring all of your gifts before God, who you are, the work of your hand, your loves, your passions, the fruits of your labor, the work that you have to, uh, that is set before you now. Bring all of these things and offer them up to God in praise. Let us worship God now with our tithes and our offerings. together as we dedicate all of our gifts. Loving and generous God, you provide for us and even bless us in more ways than we can number. Receive our tithes and offerings that tell of your wondrous and steadfast love, so that those who do not yet know you may also come to your love. Amen. Amen. Please join us at the table. Come to the table as all saints come, as God's people always do, with love, hope, and questions. Bricks without straw, fiery furnace, no wine, five loaves. Who is going to wash the Passover feast? Come to the table with your children, old and new and old. And your celebration of memories and your imagination of possibilities for times yet to come, which I fear you are welcome. And the weeping last. 
There is a sacred story that goes way back, older than ancestors, older than anything here. To wind blowing over waters, God's love was in a garden, and a flood-drenched rainbow. God's love was in a desert tent, barley fields for gleaning, a slingshot, a mythically big fish, and a new thingled way in the wilderness. There is a sacred story that goes back to a mother in a barn, a foster father, and skyfully distanced angels. We love stories, especially this one of the baby named Jesus, loved by a cow, three magi, and many shepherds who grew up, healed people, told awkward parables, and made people angry, sometimes out of their minds. At Passover, he broke unleavened bread and poured wine and himself for saints who slept when he needed friends. But the shelter in every place of love gave that time full of death a hope of waking to resurrection and an Emmaus of self-understanding. And so now we come, clothed in our own sad times and our own cloud of witnesses, to hope. All the saints we have known, the saints we will know, and the saints we are. So let's pray together. Bless us and bless these gifts. May the Spirit rest upon this time and this table, surrounded tenderly by our memories of saints as on sacred times and tables long ago. So that this loaf may be broken love. And this cup, a well of blessing, for we pray in the words of our ancestors that we claim as our own the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Taste and see that God is good. Eat this bread. Sharing love, we will never be hungry. Happy are those who take refuge in God. The cup on your table is blessed. Drinking deeply, we will never thirst. Let us give thanks. Spirit of Christ, stay with us where we stay as familiar as our daily places, plates, and cups. Go with us where we go, safe and full of love as the mask across our lips. May we, your eager and sometimes awkward saints, carry in us a communion from which all can share, comfort for loss, courage for speaking, compassion for healing, we give you thanks for both the shelter and the road. Amen. Our closing hymn is a great one for all the saints. So let's sing.
And now may the God who shakes heaven and earth, the God whom death could not contain, the God who lives to disturb and heal us, bless us with power to go forth and proclaim the gospel in all the world. Amen. Amen. Bye, everyone. See you next week.